Hello, and thanks for tuning in. You're listening to my good news episode, and it can be good news for you, too, if you keep in mind this reality. Business acquirers are actually buying employee talent, commitment, and cash flow. Hey, keep in mind, the employee's talent and commitment may be the biggest enhancer or diminisher of cash flow. And the kind and size of company does not matter. More than ever, buyers, sellers, and lenders have to look to the cash flow. Not yesterday's, but what's coming. Cash flow diminishes when employees can't or won't generate it. Hey, too many business buyers don't discover what they actually bought until after they complete their transaction. And it's not good news. It's why there are so many dumb deals and buyer remorse. And that's why we first evaluate the employees. And then we examine the cash flow. What we don't do up front is go deeply into the financials because, well, the financials are historical and the future is imaginary. So the financial statements might have little to do with what's ahead. Think of it like this. Employee talent and commitment fuels cash flow. Here's some reality. Too many business buyers are blinded by the seller's employees. So in this episode, we're going to pay attention to the solutions, what employers and employees are doing or can do to avoid conflicts. So it can be win-win for everyone. I'm Ted Leverett, broadcasting from PartnerOnCall.com. I'm the original business buyer advocate. For more than 30 years, I've been training and guiding people worldwide who buy small and mid-sized businesses. I'm not a business broker, never have been. I don't sell businesses or represent sellers. You can learn more about how the savviest searchers and buyers achieve done deals by reading both of my books. Hey, sellers read them too, so they know how buyers are going to behave. How to prepare yourself and find the right business to buy and how to buy the right business the right way. You can get them on Amazon. Okay, our topic today features 37 solutions to the problems that are bothering some of the employees and employers in the small and mid-sized business arena. And it's also going to help the sellers and buyers of those businesses. Now, keep in mind, this episode is one of seven topics in my series. And here we're going to talk about how to create and sustain harmonious relationships. I'm going to show you evidence. I'm going to show you how you can avoid and mitigate and cope with the risks. See me the other episodes so you know more about the risks and you see what's coming. Okay, so what what are some of the solutions? Well, we're really going to try to eliminate or at least reduce the dysfunctional relationships. And to do that, I want to direct you to 37 hopeful headlines from the news and social media. These articles and stories, they relate to the pathways that people are using to improve relationships. When you hear the headlines, you don't have to take notes. Here's how to access the links to all the headlines where you'll get free reports and other resources that you can use to anticipate what's ahead and then handle it. Go to LinkedIn, find my article, How Employees Are the Biggest Risk for Business Owners, Sellers, and Buyers. You can also access that information on my website, partneroncall.com. Okay, here's what we're seeing in the news, the headlines. Number one, your boss might be hoping you quit because it's easier and cheaper than firing you. Hey, guess what? That can be good news if you're an employer. That's one of the solutions. 
Number two, hustle culture is a dangerous myth, burnout expert says. Here are six ways to beat it. Three, retaining the team. How to mitigate your number one risk in M&A deals. Well, if you're thinking about buying or selling a business, I think you're going to want to go to my resources and read that report. Number four, how to manage the corporate risk associated with employee personal crises. Hey, if you can help them, if employers can help employees who are having issues, everybody can win. Five, in turbulent times, go for growth. Six, risks associated with a growing number of employees. Hey, look at <laughs> Facebook, Alphabet, Tesla, oh, the financial companies, even uh, one of the companies I disrespect the most, Goldman Sachs. They're dumping employees because they brought on more than they thought they, well, they brought on what they thought they needed, and it turned out, guess what? They didn't. Okay, number seven. Seven types of employees at risk in growing companies. Eight, balance flexibility and upskilling are keys to employee retention. You got to get that balance right. Nine, six steps you can take now to feel more financially prepared in the new year. Hey, remember, it's all about cash flow for the employer and for the employee. Oh, and for lenders too. Ten, five ways to recession-proof your money as soaring interest rates and record inflation make a downturn seem inevitable. 11. How to coach your references to help you land a job. And this is according to an HR expert. If you're looking for work, folks, you got to check out that article. 12. Here's how to be a winner in the war for talent. 13. Most corporate virtual learning modules are non-interactive with low retention rates. Hey, folks, don't waste your money. 14. Why personnel departments need to return to basics. 15. Why empowering employees to give back at work improves retention. That is a really eye-opener article. 16. How employee training partnerships can benefit your business and what to look for in a partner. In other words, a trainer. And by the way, that relates, relates to your advisory team. If you don't have a good advisory team, if you're trying to buy a business, sell a business, own a business, um, well, okay, you're a moron. It's just, it's just not smart. Get the best. 17. The future of work. Four ways companies can evolve to usher in the future of the workplace. Hey, the workplace is changing, folks. The old ways, uh, some of them are not going to work, and they'll take you down. And I'm talking to you also, employees. 18. Peer mentoring in the workplace. 10 benefits and best practices. 19. Don't assume that you can simply raise prices to cover costs. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a fool's gold. 20. Top 10 security awareness training topics for your employees. Hey, you better get that right or you may not have a company or a job. 21. Online training modules and one-off workshops are much more effective when coupled with real-world practice scenarios. Hey, that's what I do with my clients. They can read my books. They can read everybody's books. They can take seminars. They can bang around on the buy-sell playing field. They can talk to lawyers and accountants. They can talk to business brokers and owners. But if they don't talk with me and we don't rehearse and practice what they're going to actually experience and then be in real time together as they're out there, everything can fall apart. So I'm just going to say 21 again for you people owning companies or wanting to buy and sell them. Yeah, the training programs are good, but they're way better when they're coupled with real world practice scenarios. And don't practice in the marketplace. Make your mistakes with people like me. Okay, 22. Strategic empathy as a source of competitive advantage. Hmm. 23. 
six ways to support LGBTQIA plus employees' mental health as a business leader. You know what? You're going to have to face up to that. Otherwise, the people who bring their whole self to work can be unnecessarily disruptive. 24. Why HR leaders should document everything before firing somebody. Why do you think the Tesla employees are uh, the ones that lost their jobs or are suing the company? Oh boy. 25. How to fix high inflation, weak growth, and labor shortages. Well, one way is to boost worker productivity. But to do that, they got to be committed to what? Play along. 26. How can employees serve as recruitment tools? That's interesting, isn't it? You know, in my business, we like to get our new clients being referred to us by other clients. Or maybe even, I have competitors out there who refer me people who they could have worked for. But because I might know in certain circumstances more or I'm better at it, they refer them to me. Those employees of yours, if they're committed, if they're productive, you treat them well, they're going to want to bring in other employees like that because they don't want to work with the deadwood either. 27. Seven straightforward ways to reduce turnover in your business. You better do it because it's been said that uh, it can cost 50% to two times what it costs to um, hire an employee. So let's say you have an employee for hundred grand, It could cost you 50000 bucks to a couple hundred thousand to do whatever it takes to bring them in and get them up to speed. We don't like turnover unless it's deadbeat and then we love it, get them out of there. 28, six of the biggest threats to effective workplace training. 29, four principles employers can follow while monitoring employees. You are monitoring, aren't you? 30, top four strategies to handle High-risk employee terminations. Look what's happening with Tesla, and you'll see it with other companies. You can't just toss these people out the door like the good old days. Those days are over. 31. How to terminate an employee and be decent about it? Yeah, that's really what we have to do. 32. Here's how to know if your company's layoff policy is a good one. You might as well look into that. 33. This tech company is clearing out recurring meetings from employee calendars. Hmm. 34. Four tips for increasing employee engagement in 2023. 35. One third of HR leaders plan to increase freelance budget in 2023. Think about that one. 36. Nine hot-button HR issues every small business needs to work on for 2023. Oh, and how do you know when it's time to invest in HR? Can you see why you need to go to LinkedIn or my website, partneroncall.com, and get the access to all of these articles? You can just click them and you have what I have. And by the way, most of your advisors are not doing that either. So get a leg up, learn what you need to know, then rely on your team to help you polish it. Okay, here's something else. You can put this to work for you. This is what I do with my clients. And sellers and owners, do it. Go to my YouTube video. Here's what savvy buyers detect from employees of companies for sale. And the best time to do that if you're thinking about buying a company is before you buy it. Do it during due diligence. Do it before there's a binding contract. The video shows you how to do it and the questions to ask. Hey, owners and sellers, this is what we want to know. Employees, this is what we're going to try to find out from you. Okay, folks, I hope you've tuned into my series of presentations about why employees are the biggest risk for business owners, sellers, and buyers. And it doesn't have to be that way. We've covered the most important issues. We've looked at relationships, the availability of the, in the labor pool. We've looked at destructive behavior, chilling expectations, what's worrying people and what's ahead. Folks, this is my last presentation in the series. Go back, find the rest on YouTube. In this presentation, I've tried to bring forth some ideas that can help you go ahead more profitably and safely. But let's not let our communication end with this communication. 
Let's privately Zoom. I can help you focus and get better results. You can email me from my website, partneroncall.com. Plus, I can help you deploy the tactics and strategies from my how-to books. You can get them on Amazon. So, I'm Ted Leverett, the original business buyer advocate. Thanks for listening, and be careful out there. Hey, you. That's right, you. Have you been looking to buy an exciting and profitable business? Are you tired of searching, but only finding barriers that impede you from owning a wonderful business? Well, have we got some good news for you. You can find and buy the right business the right way. And you don't have to go it alone. For over 30 years, author and transaction advisor Ted Leverett, the original business buyer advocate, has been helping buyers worldwide achieve win-win done deals. Ted Leverett says, you can't buy it if you can't find it. You see, buying a business is all about search. Because if you can't find it, you can't buy it. It's about being best and first. First on the scene with sellers and being the seller's first choice and top of mind for brokers and sellers. And most importantly, avoiding buyer competition. What about having to compete with other buyers? Well, you have to outbid them, which is a good way to pay more than a business is worth. Searchers do better with a winning business buyer marketing plan. And that's where Ted Leverett comes in. He'll help you prepare a winning plan. And then he'll guide your actions so you can find and then buy the right business the right way. But searching is not enough. The reality is too many people buy the wrong business. Or they buy the right business, but on the wrong terms. That's why, if you want to buy the right business the right way, it makes sense to have Ted Leverett, the original business buyer advocate, on your advisory team. And one of the best ways to know what the savviest searchers and buyers do is to read Ted Leverett's books, How to Prepare Yourself and Find the Right Business to Buy, and How to Buy the Right Business the Right Way. You can get them at his website, partneroncall.com. Don't chance it. Right now, go to partneroncall.com, get the books, and schedule a free and private telephone conversation with Ted Leverett.